Welcome back everybody. Today on the Hamilton Collection, we are gonna review all five of my hypercars head to head. We're gonna go over why I didn't buy some hypercars and we're gonna show you guys some personal insight into some hypercars that I've got on order. First and foremost, we're gonna go over all five hypercars in my collection and I'm gonna give you a super fun, cool fact about each one of them along the way. This is my McLaren Senna, previously owned by Mr. Dead Mouse, with that there huge wang. And of course, up next is the Porsche 918 Spider. This is a one of one color PTS with some awesome contrast that I love, a lot of people hate, but what matters is that I love it. This is my Bugatti Chiron. <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it's, it just goes without saying words. It's just, it's special. Next up, the crown jewel of the collection, my Bugatti Chiron. Definitely the most powerful car of the entire collection until my box GTR is back here with 2,000 horsepower. And we've got the Pagani Huayra, previously owned by Mr. Keith Urban. That's all I got to say about that one. And then of course we've got the McLaren P1, Tommy's favorite car. One of the first hybrid supercars to exist. I think it's the most beautiful car Steve owns. They're timeless, that's perfect. And it's a P. Juan, look at the plate. <laughs> Come on, you can't beat it, man. Huge Wang, huge Wang or P. Juan, what would you take? You tell me, comment below. <laughs> All right, so before we jump straight into the hybrid comparison, I wanted to teach those of you who don't know the difference between supercars and hypercars. There are three main things. The first one being hypercars are almost always over a million dollars. The second one is production number. So most hypercars are limited to 500 units or less. And the third thing is performance. Um, typically hypercars are the top 1% of whatever they're made to do, whether it's tracking zero to 60, luxury, the whole nine yards, um, they're always gonna be like top echelon, even above supercar status. Now there is logic to the order that I bought these cars in. I bought the center first because that was essentially my gateway drug into hypercars. It was that million dollars right at that million dollar mark. It looks freaking insane. I just fell in love with it and it was, again, a little more affordable than the others. So that was my first one in. One good thing I wanted to note, so at the time Steve bought this car, the, his favorite car he owns and quite possibly still the favorite car you've ever owned is the 720S. So this car is basically a 720 that's brought up to the highest level performance for tracking, which I think is a cool fact. Tommy knows me better than I myself. McLe it being a McLaren definitely probably had the most thing in play. And we actually ordered it from Canada and I had to wait two months for it to clear customs and get some recall stuff fixed related to the gas tank that just caught on fire randomly too, but it was worth it. We also uh, talked to Dead Mouse. Now Natalia noticed that he liked one of our posts on Instagram. So how did you get, how did you get in touch with him? So I just reached out to him and I invited him um, to a track day and he said he would check his schedule and see if he's free and and it never got and back. And it never got back. <laughs> 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 Thanks, oh, well. Dead Mouse. Right up. Oh, well. Natalia, everybody. <laughs> Job, do my job. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah. This is what I said. I said, word on the street is you think this your 720S is faster than your old Senna. Let's put that money where your mouth is. Loser donates five thousand dollars to charity. I'll even ship the car to you. Uh, he backed out. I see there's money involved, so <laughs> I, I would have done five G's, man. Number two is the Bugatti Chiron. Now, this is basically the the hypercar of the hypercars. It is it is the crown jewel, as I think I mentioned before. So I had to have this. Plus, it's all-wheel drive which means it could potentially be better in the winter and as a daily driver. And this might be the one that I daily drive the most out of the Hypers, yeah? I think this is the car, I, I have like a sheet of all the miles for the cars. I think this is the one you put the most miles on of anything in the yes. collection. Oh, now that, that's pretty fantastic. Also the most expensive, so I am losing the most, I am hemorrhaging money <laughs> from this thing. I totally surprised Tommy with this one too. And uh, and it just I think it, you found out the day that it was delivered that I had gotten it or was, close. Yeah, you asked me like if if I could find somebody to ship a car back from L.A. I'm like not on this short of notice. You're like okay. I'm like, what car do you get that's in L.A.? <laughs> I'm like what the hell? And he's like I don't know. We'll see. And then he surprised me like. That was, that was crazy. I, I was driving when he told me I had to like pull over and catch my breath. I was freaking out. Uh -huh. over this car. My third purchase was the McLaren P1. Now, why did I buy this? Well, because this was about the time that Tommy started having influence on my hyper and supercar decisions. Sure did. You guys can thank me for that. Uh, I used this car to penetrate Steve's, I mean, uh, Steve's pocketbook. Um, <laughs> this is my favorite hypercar ever made. This is my favorite car ever made. I mean, I was a hypercar, but I think it's my favorite car ever made. The P1 is my, I think is the best of the best looking, handling, acceleration. It's so much fun to drive. Um, I don't think Steve's quite there with me, but I think once he tracks it, since he hasn't tracked it and I have, um, he might feel the same way. What do you think? I think that every time that I, I drive it, I wonder why I don't drive it as much. So like, I enjoy it, but it's it takes a little bit of motivation to get me to go drive it. Is it top three? No. 
That is cool. He goes, it takes it takes motivation for me to drive my $1.7 million McLaren. I'm like, what are you even talking about, dude? <laughs> el próximo carro que compre es el Pagani Huayra. Why did I say that in Spanish? Because this is Italian. So, uh, Tommy, why did I get this for? <laughs> in all seriousness, I actually fell in love with Pagani after I had dinner with the basically the entire Pagani team, and they unveiled the new model to me. There was a white Huayra Roadster um, the fall, a, a year before you bought this one. And I'm like, see, I think this would be a really nice addition to the collection. It was right before you got the, I think it was the Bugatti. And uh, I think after we had dinner with the whole Bugatti team, you took buying a Huayra more seriously. The H is silent, Tommy. It's Huayra. <laughs> I ate you, Steve. <laughs> H is silent. So at a certain point, you just kind of run out of hypercars to buy. As my fifth decision, the choices were getting limited because I've also got a bunch in order, right? So I had asked a friend named Rick who had several hypercars, which his favorite was of the three that I kind of had in mind. And this one was pretty much at the top of the list of the three remaining. Ordered it sight unseen as usual, got it. And a big part of why I ordered it was because of the specific color combo, but got it sight unseen, drove it, and absolutely thrilled. And isn't that your favorite car, Mr. Bailey? It's my favorite car, yeah. It's his I've been telling well. you for months to get one. Um, side note, the two other cars that were um, were up in the running was the Ford GT, the newer one, the 17, and then the Carrera GT. Now the Carrera GT, he spoke very highly of the Ford. He uh, was still a fan, but it just wasn't quite at that like million dollar caliber. It felt more like what Tommy describes as a $400,000 car. For, I think for Ford Arcade, that car's a steal. That's what they were MSRP. Honestly, I think 650 or 700 for that car is worth it, but the, the numbers right now, it's just crazy. The Carrera GT, on the other hand, is another one of my favorite cars. I, I think that that's got to join the collection at one, some I, point. I mean, I love Porsches. I have three, right? But like, I just, I-, I So what's a fourth? But like, the, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think it looks, I know I know it has the raw and the experience. I just really don't like the way that it looks and people are going to hate for that. And that's just my honest opinion. And well, I'll should, always be honest with you. You should drive it with a pair of bag on your head. You can't see it. <laughs> Oh, that was um, English. <laughs> you should got to do it. Do they yeah. make paper bags that go over entire over cars? Over car? <laughs> you can invent that and then just cut like a little windshield out and you can't see the car, it's just a bag. Good, good, good. You I know all about paper bags. And now for the bread and butter. The five different categories and which hypercar is ranked at the top of each category. Natalia, take it away with the categories. <laughs> Alright guys, so we're going to start off with interior. We're going to go on a handling, um, acceleration, distinctive feature of the car and which one is the most luxurious. Ready? And the winner of the interior is the Pagani Waira. Interior? I don't even know her. <laughs> I hardly know her, man. I'm gonna go take a seat in this thing and I'm gonna tell you a few things about why it is amazing. Why don't you take a seat, Steve? Oh, yeah. He's in. Pagani takes immense pride in the craftsmanship and the uniqueness of their interior. This one is actually almost light years apart from the next nicest interior. I mean, there are some crazy features like the exposed shifter apparatus there, um, the Hobbs timer that literally tells you how many hours are in the engine. The gauges are just amazing. I think the gauges on this car are actually um, like modeled after watch faces for luxury watch manufacturers. It's, yep. They're stunning. They, I mean, if you look at it, they look like they're milled for timepieces. Yes. The seats are the most plush and comfortable out of even my Super and my hypercars. I don't necessarily like the finish that uh, Mrs. Keith Urban picked out. Mrs.? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the most unique key of the entire collection. A lot of things that most people don't realize is that Pagani also includes the shape of their logo pretty much everywhere. I mean, it's right here, it's down here around the side, it's in the seat, it starts around the dash there. It is in a lot of different places in this, and why not? They're very proud of the interior, and they should be because it is freaking awesome. Side note, the carbon from the exterior actually flows right into the inside. You can see this blue weaved carbon right there by the glove box, and it rolls up behind the dash. Definitely a unique door handle. I don't have any other door handle that's like this red or just this little latch that goes like that. I would also say this has the most comfortable steering wheel in the collection. The only downside to it though is there are horns right here and like every time I drive this thing I'm just randomly honking and sometimes that angers people. <laughs> Woo! I didn't think Man, it was actually going to work, bro. And Keith Urban did spec out the luggage. I can see two different suitcases behind and there was also some other ones, There's right? There's more that, in the engine bay, yeah. yeah. And some more in the engine bay that match this lovely country tan denimish color that we've got going on here that we are going to replace at some point in time. That country tan. Bob, tell you what, man, I'm up on get it, neck, neck, more than I'll see him on <laughs> And next up is the fastest acceleration. And this one is hands down gonna be the Bugatti Chiron. Now, what better way to show you why it has the fastest acceleration or how than to take you for a ride in it? Let's do it. <laughs> That's my boss in a Bugatti. <laughs> 
Someone help. So we are putting this thing to the test. We are gonna hopefully find a nice open patch of safe Mexican streets. Look at that P1 jet off. That thing is very nice. Here we go. Let's see if we can catch up. All right, here we go. Zero to 60, some of them will keep up with it, but beyond that, very little to nothing will keep up with the Bugatti Chiron. This happens to uh, to just be my overall favorite vehicle, the collection. It really is just comfortable, cozy, all-wheel drive, so I can drive it all year round. You can see my odometer has 5,149 miles. I got this with a little over 300 miles, so darn near at the 5,000 mile limit in 12 months. Uh, it is just it's wide You know like the p1 I sit in that and my hips actually don't even fit in it Well, I got to just kind of like crush my body into it um, But this thing is just just timeless comfy Accelerates handles very smoothly the shifting Very smooth and excellent um, A huge part of the reason why I'm specking out a brand new Bugatti. I was fortunate enough to get one of these sold out SS specs and Tommy and I have been having a bunch of fun with that configurator. Natalia has done a couple versions. Bailey has. Acceleration go. I mean, there is. That wasn't even full ham. And this thing is just way apart from the rest of the, the rest of the traffic. Hot diggity. Yes. Amazing. Oh, and uh, important note, the brakes on this, I mean, they are way better than any other car in the collection. Like, there is no, no hyper or supercar that even comes close to the braking power of this. Granted, the rotors alone are 16 inches big, which is as big as some factory wheels found on cars. And the next category is the most distinctive feature. Now this vehicle that I chose actually has a lot of different distinctive features and just looking at it makes it very obvious. It's going to be the McLaren Senna. So let's go over some of these features real quick. First of all, you just look at this thing, it looks like the Batmobile. So it has arguably the hugest wing in the entire collection. I mean, that thing got me bricked the f*** up. <laughs> <laughs> It has this, this massive kind of aero kit that runs front to back in carbon. Next it has these side vents. Now, are these cooling the brakes, the engine, or both? Uh, I think it's I know for sure the engine, but okay. the brakes maybe as well. I see like a, I see like a radiator in there, so that's definitely cooling some, some engine fluid and this such. This is kind of cool, dude. There's a little thing right here to suck some air in. Yes. Top hood scoop. Glass panels on the top that notoriously crack. We've already had one on this and many on the 720. It has the glass door panels, which I have never seen in any other vehicle, uh, so that people can spy on your legs when you're driving. Next, it has these huge air intakes right here that exit these huge ducts right here. Because McLaren, you know, with that and the, the huge wang there, McLaren is all about downforce, making this thing track ready and just keeping it glued to the ground. I like big ducks that I cannot lie. <laughs> just kidding. Um, another fun fact is this right here. So these are actually active inside this, this Napier green uh, accent. So when you're tracking, uh, I don't know if it's braking or acceleration, but they open up airflow to cool the front brakes, which is another kind of a cool feature. So there are kind of two cars in my collection that if I am just really feeling like I wanna have an amazing curb presence and get people to look, it's gonna be either the Bugatti or this. This one definitely gets the most like shock value of it just being this crazy whacked out car. And I abs some people hate the design. I think they're nuts. I, I absolutely love this one. I would note that this car, when it was first released, I hated the design. 
A lot um, of people did. I think it's one of those cars that it's like so ugly, it's cool. And I mean that as a compliment, because truly on the road, I, out of all of the cars that Steve owns, this is the one that people like don't, they have no idea what it is. It's like totally jaw dropping and shocking. And I think part of that's the sound too. This car is an aftermarket exhaust that Steve installed and it is probably the loudest car in the collection. So ugly, it's cool. We should call it the time you got the A. You think I'm cool? I do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. kidding. Uh, <laughs> and so now, side to the side to the side note. This is the only vehicle of the five hypers that we've done any modifications to. As Tommy mentioned, it has the down pipes and then it has the tune. I don't think I will touch any of these other ones quite yet. Will I? <laughs> yeah, I probably will. <laughs> and the next category is the best handling hypercar. Now, Bailey, Natalia, Tommy, and I have all kind of uh, been thinking about this one long and hard, and that is what she said. And it was kind of between two cars. So the first one that came to mind was the 918. That one is very, very high up there, but it came in a very close second to the McLaren P1. This thing absolutely grips the road. And this is another one where what better way to show you than other than to go drive this bish. So that's what we're gonna do. In a straight line? <laughs> and she really knows how to handle. Yeah, she fine. really knows how to grip. <laughs> <laughs> As I mentioned, this is a car that, for whatever reason, I'm not usually attracted to to just go for a drive, but every time I get in it, I wonder why I don't drive it more. It definitely has one of the most unique sounding engine setups. Sounds really nice. Dear God, that scraping. Blasted race mode, I gotta go on more of an angle. Oh gosh. Oh God. I'm at an angle going slow. That is just painful. Ouch. Scraped the f up out of that. And final category is the most luxurious vehicle. This one, as I stand here in front of the Porsche 918, now I just want to comment that this one unfortunately did not actually win number one in any of these categories. Um, however, still a very solid car. Like it comes second in actually a lot of the different ones. Arguably the most reliable car, although the bug has also been freaking bomb proof with how hard I have driven that and put nearly 5,000 miles on it. But so I just want to mention that Porsche 918 is still a fantastic car. Probably part of the reason why I got it fifth was just because it didn't necessarily excel in any one of those important categories. Um, but the real winner of it goes to my Bugatti. That hands down is the most luxurious vehicle. It has an extremely comfortable interior, very timeless interior, um, amazing, just clean, not overly aggressive 
uh, street presence. Road noise is <clears throat> non-existent in that car, especially yep. compared to the other like carbon hypercars. That yes. thing's super quiet. Everything's really like ergonomic. Like I feel like the user interface is super easy to use in that car where it's kind of difficult in some of the others. There's a lot of reasons that car is just, it just kills it in the luxury department. Yes. They didn't put a like big LCD or screen in there because they wanted to make sure it remained timeless so it doesn't look like it's dated in 10 years. And as we do this last comparison, I actually like the Bugatti Chiron so much that I am specking a brand new Chiron SS. Uh, that we have been going back and forth with on colors. We'll show you guys a few of our front runners right now. Let us know what you think in the comments. If you haven't seen the video yet on the initial specking that we're doing on the Bugatti, click up right her. The Bugatti itself is really in a league of its own. I've hit hard on this already, but nearly 5,000 miles in a year. That, With all of the cars in my collection, I have still managed to put 5,000 miles in this car. That is just how freaking amazing it is. It grips the road, it is luxurious, comfortable, it accelerates fast. I can actually take it out early in the morning and it's not gonna rattle the neighborhood or wake up the neighbors. It is the only car that actually drops the jaw of spectators that are looking at this. I think if I had to pick one hypercar, it might, if, to, like, if I could only have one the rest of my life, yes. with maintenance, everything considered, that might be it. We wanted to make sure that everything was covered, so we're gonna do kind of a rapid fire session on some other things about the cars. Tommy, take it away, young man, first thing. All right, Natalia, take it away. Thank you, sir. Tracking, what's your favorite car to track? <laughs> uh, rapid fire, if I'm gonna track, I think I'm gonna do the, actually, me, Senna, you, what? I mean, I love the P1, I'm just biased. No. Senna, never track uh, uh, Bailey. <laughs> I would have to say Senna. Senna, cool, Senna wins. Next, uh, next one. Daily driving. Daily driving, absolutely the Bugatti. Absolutely Bugatti. Depends on the day, but Bugatti. I'm gonna have to say 918. Bugatti wins. <laughs> next one. Date night. Date night. Uh, because my wife likes it the best, Bugatti. Pagani. Waira for me, for sure. <laughs> Let's say you've got a girl and you're taking her out. Which one are you going in? I'll take Waira. Waira wins. Yeah, nice, boy. nice. But Next one. Cruising. Cruising. How far? <laughs> one hour. Like <laughs> yeah. one hour. Oh, all right. Therapy. There, there goes the Senna. Short term cruise, probably the Senna. I really hate to keep picking the freaking Bugatti, but for an hour, I'm going to take the Bugatti. That goes, that's a testament to how amazing, truly, yes. how amazing that car is. It is in a league of its own. Can I just say with gas prices, no one's cruising anymore? <laughs> I heard that, player. I heard that, that's man. That's why we got an electric 19 and a P1. <laughs> She's like, man, these prices are getting crazy. Throw us that in electric mode. Which one are y'all um, cruising? Shoot, Senna. Cruising for an hour. Dude, Senna, for an hour, your back? Is that okay with <laughs> my that? neck and my back, bro. <laughs> oh, man, and a awesome. few other parts. <laughs> Speaking of necks and backs, honestly, <laughs> the Ford GT is my favorite cruiser, but if it's a hyper, it's got to be P1. I, yeah, honestly, I, I'm gonna go P1 as well because the sound. P1 cruiser. wins, best comes cruiser. back from zero well, the votes. GT, the GT's a sleeper. That car is the best car to cruise yeah, in. Yeah, but we're talking ever. about hypers. We're talking about hypers. I know, I know. I'm just I saying, like, fun fact, it. that car is amazing to cruise in. I don't I don't think I would cruise a hyper. I would think it would be the 765 for me. Top down? Yep. Mm. I might be with you. Give me a little that's bit a, of time. That's a comfy car. Alrighty. What's next? Uh, road presence. Road presence. Everyone's so driving, not, not parked in front of a restaurant, no, but you're driving. you're driving downtown and you uh, need to break everyone's neck. What's I mean gonna... the Senna, that's my yeah. opinion. Well, a mile away you can also hear it, but Bugatti. Yes. Dude, the Pagani's crazy Bugatti? too. I, Senna you can hear from a mile away, so uh -huh. it's gonna break everyone's neck, but Bugatti, it's like, damn, so he has a Bugatti. They're, yeah, there are different like, levels to it like everyone knows that a bugatti is but the senna looks crazy and the wire is like the wire is like awesome for red presence too so what are you picking um i'll go with wire for, for red presence <clears throat> Wyra, i got senna you got i'll do bug bug, bug. i think i'm gonna have to go wire as well Let's go. yeah uh, shit. you and tommy yeah. like ganging up bro last but not least exhaust for the exhaust i think that we need to also show our followers some clips of all the exhaust noises and let's see what they think We already know them all because we drive them all the time. I'm gonna say 
It depends. Like the Senna is loud and obnoxious. Exactly. Now, before we choose anything, the Senna is the only car with an aftermarket exhaust. So we, it's not uh, unbiased. Like it's not fair to compare that car because stock, that car didn't sound great. I say, really? I say P1. It sounds yeah, amazing. It's it's, it sounds unlike anything else in the yeah, collection. P1. For, for a factory exhaust is am Cause, amazing. Because the Senna sounds similar to the 720. It sounds similar to the 765 when they have exhausts. The Bugatti is yeah. unique, but it's quiet. No, the, the blow off valve on that's, yes. the Bugatti is yes. crazy. But the Agreed. tone, it's like so like low. It's meaty. Like, it's, it's meaty. It's a meaty, but yeah. Bugatti needs to be subtle. You said but like, Bugatti? <laughs> yeah, we should make that <laughs> my mind, you Nothing know? Nothing wrong with a Bugatti, I'm saying. Bugatti, Bugatti. <laughs> what's, your, what's your vote though? Him and I say P1. I strictly take the Senna for the exhaust. So. Okay, and you, Bailey? Bailey boy? I'm gonna have to say Senna because the aftermarket exhaust, but if we're going based off like stock, I would say P1. Yep. Yep. I, I, say, I would say that said, then the P1 takes it. And then the R8. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Not with those wheels, though. No. We're gonna switch those. Yep. Reed. 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 <laughs> what did y'all think of all those exhaust sounds? Pretty bad ass, huh? huh? Yes. What? Yes. 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 Bad ass. <laughs> yes. A big, big like for this video if you think those exhausts are bad ass. Big like. Comment what your favorite exhaust was. And while you're commenting, go ahead and subscribe, turn that notification bell on, buy some merch, man. And while you're doing that, <laughs> we don't have any merch though. Well, this is, we don't sell these ones. Bailey's wearing merch. Um, here, Bailey. <clears throat> Oh, they get to see the, they get to there see the There he is. Man. Wait, wait, wait. There's Strike more. A oh, 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 there he is. Oh. Strike a pose, what? man! Strike a pose! <laughs> I'm bricked up! He's bricked up! Oh man, we got a backup videographer right there. Let me know how he did. Hey, let me know how Tommy did with the uh, video work, y'all. I'm just cool. saying, if you want to look like Bailey, buy some merch. Whether that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I'm not getting any merch. <laughs> Sorry, Bailey. But as always, thanks for watching the Hamilton Collection. Princess what? Waves. Princess Waves. Princess Waves. Tommy was a little hammered on a Mexico trip and he literally just walks into a room full of guys. He's like, what's you guys packing? <laughs> I just needed to know where Steve stands in the ranks. <laughs>